most peaceful time I spend in my life is when I am on that bike and the course is mine, which by the way, where else in the world do you get the course all to yourself? Um, and the course is mine and you're going down uh, the course. It is the total be here now experience in the moment of what you're doing. And you're concentrating on being smart and being safe, but ultimately you get comfortable and in the end there's a peace that, that comes over you about mile three or mile four You've been going at speed. You're probably gonna, you're going about as fast as you're likely to go before you hit the speed traps, and you can just settle in and in, literally enjoy what you're doing. It's not scary. It's not nerve-wracking. It's actually uh, it's peaceful, and it's it's as I would imagine a chanting a mantra would be, which I don't do, but if I did. I, I imagine the peace I would gain from it would be what it's like to be driving at speed out on this desert in this huge expanse and having it all to yourself. It's a great place to be. San Francisco and BMW San Jose being not far away, I went down and knocked on Chris's door one day and uh, told him that I was there to uh, interview for the job of pilot on his bike. He kind of laughed at me and said, we don't have a job interview available for that. We're, we've got a young guy here that's riding, a, riding the bike and he works on it so he gets to ride it to Bonneville. And Chris said to me, by the way, what makes you think you can go faster than him? And I said, well, I know I'm smaller because I'm smaller than everybody. And, um, and I've got more experience at 160 miles an hour than anybody in the country. Again, he laughed at me like I was crazy. And I explained to him that I had a K-1200, I wasn't working, I was spending my time in the desert, and it's a bike capable of that, and he knew that. And so I was spending hours riding at high speeds. So my goal when I came out here to ride with Chris was to try to hook up with somebody that would uh, give me a faster bike. And uh, in fact, I did. I met a guy named Jack Costello, who's a legend out here, was a friend of Burt Monroe's. He builds radical motorcycle streamliners, and he uh, took a liking to me and said he needed a small guy. He was working on a 100cc streamliner, and uh, he'd like me to pilot it. So I helped him over three years develop the, the, the machine. It was called 5050, and uh, it was 16 feet long and 22 inches high. It had an 80cc motor. First year we went, first year here at Bonneville at Salt Week, we went, or uh, Speed Week, we went 75 miles an hour. Second year we went uh, 110 miles an hour. And the third year I went 149 miles an hour. All with the same machine, the same motor. The story is simple. It's not simple. It takes a long time to go fast out here. Uh, you come out with the greatest of dreams and hopes, but the reality is the salt humbles all of us. And uh, those of us that get to go fast right away, we're just lucky. And so I worked with Jack, we developed the bike, got it going, got a uh, really good world record. We broke a record that had been standing for 22 years. But my goal always was to leverage whatever I did into a faster traditional motorcycle. And I took that, my experience from BMW with Chris and with Jack, and I went to BMW of North America and I asked them to uh, sponsor me on a, on a K13, K12, and was able to convince them to do that. Came out here, we were able to set a record in the first year, and that really set my whole juices flowing for riding motorcycles at Bonneville. And since then, I uh, have come back to BMW to ride with them. I ride wherever I get a ride. I'm not mechanical. I don't know how to fix it, so I've got to go with the people that are willing to put somebody else on their bike. I've now been doing it for 10 or, 10 or so years, and one of the things that's great about this sport is it allows anybody of any age to uh, come out here and compete with uh, the fastest in the world. Uh, it's not a sport that requires uh, fast responses and, and quick reaction times. It's a sport that actually requires patience and uh, time. And if you have both of those, you can learn to go fast. And that's what's, what's great about the sport is it equalizes everybody. The young guys and the old guys and, and women, we can all go at the same speed and or faster. And it's the kind of competition that 
that I enjoy. It's competing for yourself, competing against a time. And if you are fortunate enough to get a record here, it's a record that uh, means you went faster than everybody that ever came before you. And, and uh, that, that's a pretty special opportunity for somebody my age to be able to have. I tell you, this place is magic. And once you come here, you get bitten by the, the bug. There's no, there's no way you can't come back year after year after year. It is special for a lot of reasons. First of all, we are one of the most beautiful, naturally beautiful places on earth. Um, the salt flat, the expanse of the salt flat is remarkable, surrounded by these mountains and uh, able to see sunsets and sunrises like nowhere else on earth. It attracts a certain kind of a person. And the people who come out here are here for both the speed, but they're also here because they love the place. And, and I fell in love with the place. Uh, as far as the people who are here and what this event is about, first and foremost, it's about going fast, but it's also really about having fun. And I tell people that what I love about Bonneville and about racing here is that it's like drag racing was in the, in the early 50s. This is a place where everybody that's here is a participant. There's not a lot of money here. There's not any really big money. Everybody that's here is here because they want to race, they want to go fast, they build their own equipment, they maintain their own machines, and uh, there's a camaraderie as a result because we've all had this common experience uh, together that is like nowhere else that I experience in life. Yeah, we're all competing with each other, but we're all on the same team. And the team we're on is, is the team of, of appreciating our time and our place here at Bonneville and the opportunity, like I said, to go fast and be able to share that with everyone else. Um, we compete, but we share tools, we share equipment. If somebody breaks a, a part, uh, they can go on the radio and let people know what they're looking for. And their fiercest competitor, if they have them, will give their last tool or their last part to uh, a fellow racer. And to be uh, around people and experience that, I know nowhere else in, in my daily life where I can find it. And uh, I've made friends here who I only see once a year, but each time I see them, it's like they're a long lost brother. And it's, it's a very special place. We got a open record. It's with not quite as fast as I'd like, but it's a record. And, and, uh, and then I got today, I got to go 190 on the other bike that I've only been going at 180 all week. So that was really exciting. <laughs> and uh, it's been it's been one of those great Bonneville days where things work out, people help you, you're encouraged, and you have a good time and you go fast. You don't go fast if you're not having fun. Who says that short Jews can't drive German machines? <laughs> Salt Flats Fever. They're on course. 
they're past the three. They're getting faster, just look and see. Tucked down low and riding with a smile, screaming on through that famous measured mile. Well, by the speed bug, I got bit. Now I just can't quit. I got the salt flats fever. 